Cure. for joining us on our pathway to peace inside the garden of peace if you're following along we're on the top of page 45 and today's lesson is going to be called silly straightenings here we go before jumping into the text i just had a note on what we talked about last time in my own book with my own notes we talked about when wives are telling you something or helping you in a way to understand what you need to do we have to try to take positive action Try to do teshuva and understand there are no tribulations without prior transgressions. God is giving us what we need to fix ourselves. And don't try to push it away. Don't try to fight back. But accept warmly and lovingly for us to be able to become better people so we can take it. And don't try to lash out or smack back or yell back because it will not end up in a good situation Garen darn tea. So, when a slave is working in the field and his master comes along and whacks him in the head with a stick, does the slave get mad and start yelling at the piece of wood? No way! You've got to be a raving lunatic and out of his mind completely. It is an inanimate object. It has no life at all whatsoever. The stick does not choose to be swung and smack you in the head. It has no option at all. Recognize what's going on here the same exact way that a slave must recognize the master of the source of the pain that is being brought to him. So too, we must never blame what is in front of our eyes, literally our wives, and become aware of the master behind it all, the puppeteer, who is pulling the strings, who is wielding his power to make these things be in front of us and coming at us. And it's from him, by him, designed specifically. You cannot get mad at your wife because then you're missing the message completely. It's literally just like you're yelling at a stick. If you're about to do it, just say, how silly am I right now? What am I doing? And where are things coming from? Get down to the source. Be real about it. Your personal mirror, the principle that a wife mirrors her husband, enables a person to refrain from criticizing his wife. Because the flaws that she exhibits are exactly the same fantastic flaws that he needs to rectify. She is an exact reflection. It's not like it's close or similar. You have this much in common. It is a 100% Mirror exactly all of the time. Not some of the time. Don't say, oh, now she's just a little crazy. Or she doesn't know the lecha. Or she was brought up this way. Or she has all those problems that are ingrained in her. That's why she's that way. And nothing to do with me. Stop for a second. Yes, it is. Take some responsibility. Take all responsibility. And understand what is going on here. If you see that the mirror hat on. It's crooked and it's skew. Do not try to tilt the mirror. Do not try to straighten the mirror. I promise you, even if you turn into a piece of wood, the metal is still reflecting a crooked hat. You ever try to straighten the mirror? No. Have you ever tried? You know those big ones that they have oh, in yes. the kids' rooms? Yes. You know, they're angled or tilted. So you try to make it straight. Your reflection does not move. You gotta be, I mean, have you not seen a mirror ever before? Do you not understand how a reflection works? Whatever you do, it doesn't matter the shape of everything around it. It will not move if you try to pull, push, twist, tilt, or angle it. It will not do any good whatsoever. Exactly likewise, comments to your wife, criticisms to her, do nothing at all to correct her. It will only destroy the joy inside of her and destroy the joy in your life as well, because it is going to bring up so many problems in the process. Don't ever try to say, honey, you're doing something wrong. Honey, we need to correct this. Sweetheart, I think you need to open up the Bible and look at these transgressions that you are being over and these prohibitions that you don't have any clue about. You're just dumb, you don't have any knowledge, you're ignorant. We need to educate you, we need to teach you. That is exactly the wrong approach, what you need to do. 
And people just don't, they don't know this. They're, just, they're, they're lacking this knowledge and it is so sad because it is ruining so many relationships on a constant basis. Just give them this little tidbit. It's so easy, simple. And then it'll transform the way that they interact with their wives in all ways, always. One with no spiritual awareness. A man is upset by the flaws that he sees in his wife. He'll get upset that she is cutting her nails on Shabbos. He'll get upset that she's picking out all the blueberries inside the fruit because that's the one thing she doesn't want to eat. He becomes embittered and he regrets his misfortune in marrying such a woman. I should have gotten a woman who was more educated, who went to Beisiakov. I should have gotten a woman whose parents were more knowledgeable or that she went to a rabbi or was closer with her teachers. I wish if only yada, 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 yada. And then he starts to have major regrets for the life that he chose and the wife that he ends up with. He also thinks that his solemn obligation, he really thinks that it is his mission in his marriage to criticize what she does, to lecture her, to reprimand her, and to sermonize her. He cannot love her either, because if he's looking for things that are wrong with her, he's seeing faults. And if you're seeing things that are wrong in your wife, it is literally pushing her away from you, and she becomes disgusting in your eyes. And that's not somebody that you're going to end up loving, not somebody that you're going to be doing good for, because it's somebody you, will, you don't want to be connected to or around. If somebody's repulsive to you, you want to be connected to them, you want to be attracted to them, you want to be magnetized to them, it's going to be the opposite. It's not going to be like an opposite north and south coming together. It's going to be a north and north butting heads, and it literally flies to the opposite side of the table when you try to push the magnets together. That's why men are from Mars and women are from Venus. They need to be opposites to attract. If you had too much of the same, it becomes a very big problem. I always thought that I wanted a wife when I was younger who was going to be so energetic just like me, jumping and running all over the place, being excited to go on vacations and to theme parks and all that stuff. Like, I want to have fun with somebody, right? Don't you want somebody that's going to do exactly all the things that you want to do? Can you imagine? My house would be a complete mess. Nothing would get cleaned up. The laundry wouldn't get done for a month. The place would be a pigsty. If I had somebody who acted the way that I did and didn't care about me throwing a clothes on the floor, yeah, I'll put it away for Shabbos. We'll clean it up, whatever it might be. And more and more and more gets procrastinated and postponed. And if I had a wife like that, that would be the worst thing in the world for me. Thank God I have a wife who is OCD and super clean and a neat freak and a maniac who wants the dishes done as soon as they're put into the sink. Leave it till the end of the day, she'll have a fit. Or God forbid you go to sleep late at night and I can wake up at 4 and she doesn't wake up till 8. I know she's off that day. Then I said I can clean it in the morning, but nope, God's going to make it that she has to get up because one of the kids is screaming, and she'll come down, and she'll see the dishes, and she'll be mad at you about it, and she'll be upset at you about it, even if you tell her I'm going to get to it in an hour. She doesn't want to hear it. She wants things done a certain way that will keep me in line, and God knows exactly what that was. And thank God I have a woman like that in my life to keep everything organized. It would be in shambles otherwise. He knows what's best for us way more than we think we do. He cannot love her because he'll see faults with her. And such an attitude is the root cause of strife in a marriage. If you're looking to say things bad about somebody, then it will destroy the peace in your home. Because you're looking for faults. Or you're criticizing what she does or how she cooks. If you don't do any of that and you only have positivity towards her and compliments towards her, you know what kind of a life she's going to live and the happiness she's going to have, and what you're going to have in your life happy, because she's happy, it's going to come back to you. She's going to want to give you back that same kind of energy that you're giving her all the time. As long as the husband thinks that he must correct her, especially when he eggs her out with comments and gives her all these criticisms, there can never be peace in the home, and the lives become purgatory, a living hell on earth in this world. You did not get married to give your wife advice. Please do not think that that's what you're here for. You got married to have a tikkun. You got married to have a soul correction within your life. And you help that by using your wife and taking what she gives you and seeing her reflection 
in your mirror to give you the best life possible and to help to get you to be where you want to in this world. Many times you think, I just want to coast, leave me alone, I'm on vacation. Why should I wake up early to go to the Vesikin if I'm going to run a marathon or a triathlon? I need my energy. I'll sleep as late as I can. I have a thousand other things to do. And believe me, your Yetzirah, your evil inclination, will come up with actual good ideas why it's physically better not to do those things that are spiritually good for you. But when we realize we're here in this world with a limited amount of time, Carpe Diem, seize the day! Take every moment we have. Right now, just look at your life. What choice can I make right now to be the betterment of my soul for the reason that I'm here in this world? Do I want to just sit down and watch a movie? Or do I want to open up a Gemara? Or learn a Chumash? Or have a Chavrusa? Do I want to go to sleep at 3 o'clock in the morning because I feel like I have to scroll on Instagram and I don't want to miss any single story, God forbid? Or on my Facebook feed, there's something that one of my friends did that's going to affect my life and it's going to change the way that I act because I saw somebody went to the bathroom or they had Cheerios for breakfast. It, what is going on in your mind that you think this is actually good for you or beneficial for you instead of going to sleep and having a better night's sleep? But the evil inclination will come up with a thousand different ways. Oh, I need some downtime. And the downtime from five minutes ends up becoming five hours because people are so addicted and they can't put their screen down because they have FOMO, they have fear of missing out, but it's not even their own lives. They think their friends' lives are so important to them. And most of the time, it's really not even their friends. They're connected to people all around the world who they have no shyness with whatsoever. But they're a friend on Facebook, whatever that means, but it's not in the real world. You're never going to cut across. You've never met them in your life. You never called them on the phone. But, oh, I have to see what's going on. Because he tricks you in so many ways. And you really believe it in your heart. You think that this is what you want. But I promise you, my friends, it is not. Make the right decisions to help make the most of your day. And just see, when you have the wife in front of you, which way you should be going. I promise if your wife saw you up in the middle of the night on your phone, she'd have a few words for you. And she'd have what to say. So if you know preemptively what your wife likes, you know that the dishes shouldn't be there sitting in the sink, don't wait for her to wake up and yell at you. Do ahead of time. Get in front of it. Take care of what is best for you in that moment to become the best that you should be without having to have all those troubles and then try to fix it afterwards because I promise you it is so much harder to try to do damage control than it is just to take care of it in the first place. So much less time, so much less aggravation, and so much more beneficial benefits come because of it. And with that, have an awesome, graciously, amazing rest of your day. Dun, 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 dun.